Hello, welcome to After Image Corneliu Forum Boyu. I'm Kate Mackay, Associate Filmmaker here at the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive. Our After Image Filmmakers and Critics in Conversation series is funded in part by the generous support of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, but I also have lots of other thank yous uh, for this program in particular because it's really, I've, it's really been great working with colleagues across the Bay Area to put this all together. So I would like to thank the Honorary Consulate of Romania and San Francisco for their support. Also our colleagues at the Institute of Slavic, East European and Eurasian Studies here at UC Berkeley, and our colleagues at the Institute of Slavic, East European and Eurasian, oops, no, I'm repeating it, are, and the Center for Russian, East European and Eurasian Studies at Stanford University, um, where Porum Boyu made a, a stop before coming here to Berkeley. They've, they've been invaluable in their support and helping get the word out and, and really helping everyone know that Forum Boyu is here in the Bay Area. Last but not least, I'd like to thank the Romanian Film Festival at Stanford, Berkeley, and San Francisco State University for their unflagging enthusiasm and support from the moment I reached out to them with the idea of bringing Forum Boyu here to BAM PFA. They've been really, really wonderful. They've helped in all kinds of different ways, including paying to have the 35 millimeter print of when evening falls on Bucharest or metabolism. Did I get that title right? <laughs> um, that will be showing on November 16th. There are no 35 millimeter prints in the US. And when you come and see it, you'll realize that part of it is about the nature of shooting 35 millimeter film. So I really didn't want to show a DCP of that title. I was kind of desperate to show the 35. So I really, really have to thank the, the Romanian Film Festival for helping out with that. Tomorrow, I hope you'll come back to see Infinite Football, which is Porum Boyu's latest film, uh, a wonderful documentary, which has been gathering great reviews both locally and in the New York Times. It was a New York Times critics pick this week as it opens for limited runs in select theaters in the US this week. So our timing was not entirely planned, but I feel like we're very, we're right on the moment with infinite football. So please come on Sunday and then tell all your friends how wonderful it is so they can seek it out. Um, tonight after our screening of 1208 East of Bucharest, Mona Nikawara is joining us once again. She was here last night, if you were here, for a post-screening conversation with Corneliu Porumboyu. Nikawara is a writer, critic, and human rights advocate who has also produced, directed, and consulted on several documentaries, including Our School, an award-winning 2014 documentary about school segregation and Roma children. Um, she's also just finished a a new documentary which hopefully will come to the Bay Area at some point soon about a Romanian poet. Scott found us writing in Variety, um, I quote this in our, our program notes, said that Porum Boyu's particular brand of farce is always shot through with the pulse of everyday life and its Sisyphean struggles, my Sisyphean struggle <laughs> to say Sisyphean. Anyway, he is simply put, one of our great contemporary observers of human comedy. And this is true of all his films if you've been coming to see them in, either in documentary form or in the forms of his fiction films, but it's really particularly true of the film we'll be seeing tonight. Uh, 1208 East of Bucharest was the 2006 Cannes Camera d'Or winner, and it brought Porum Boyu to international attention. So please turn off your cell phones first, and then join me in welcoming Corneliu Porumboyu. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, enjoy the ride, and uh, we'll meet at the end of the screening for the Q&A. Uh, I hope it won't be this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please join me in welcoming back Corneliu Porumboyu 
and Mona Nicoara. So um, that last bit that wasn't translated was about how any resemblance to real characters is accidental. Um, so let's start with some real characters. What were you doing at 1208 <laughs> on December 22nd? I was uh, playing ping pong with a friend of mine. Uh, in, uh, yeah. And uh, I returned home and I saw at the TV that uh, uh, I, I know that something, I was 13 years old, so uh, I know uh, that something it was happening before in Timisoara, there were rumors, uh, but on yeah, but at that time pre precisely, I was playing uh, twelve oh eight uh, at twelve oh eight o'clock. I was playing uh, a ping pong. So when when did you see the revolution, and what did you experience of it? After that, uh, of course, we follow all the night and all the days after. Uh, I followed uh, the the TV. And uh, yeah, my my access to the revolution it was through through the TV, and if, of course it was a uh, it was a moment like yeah that you you think that all the world it will change uh, right away. And did it change right away? Not <laughs> no. So you came up with this project at one at one point in in your life. Was it after you did the first two shorts? Was it during that period of time? What is the genesis of the project? Um, I saw a TV show in my hometown, Vaslui, a TV show in '98. At that time, I was student, or '99, I was student. So I saw a TV show um, in which three characters they were speaking. If it was or not revolution in my hometown. And they relate all this with 1208, you know, with this hour. So um, when I saw that TV show in the beginning, I was laughing. After that, I get uh, nervous because they were speaking like that uh, about the revolution. After that, I I, uh, I uh, stopped the TV. But the story stays into my mind. I finished the school and uh, I even had a project uh, for my first film that I was working, a script that I was working for two years. And I felt that that script, it's, uh, it was too schematical in a way, you know? So I said, okay, I have to write another story to get out from that one and after that return. So I decided to write this story. And in fact, I write it very fast. And in fact, I said that I puke it because I, in one month I had, I had the script done and I, I decided to make this to be my first, uh, my first film. And you made it basically independently. There is no yeah. state money. There is. Yeah, I made it's, it. It's one of the f it's one of the first successful Romanian independent movies where there's no support from uh, from 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 the outside. Was it because you wanted to do it very fast? Was it because you were very early in your career? I have uh, no. I, first, I had I have the money for the other one. So how I decided to to stop that project? It was. I can't use that money for this one, so and I wa I wanted also to make it um, to make it fast and uh, um, also yeah dealing with I said it's better to make it like that um, about the topic also. Yeah, one of the most hilarious things I don't know how many of you caught it, but like right in the beginning, there's credits uh, for an oil company. A uh, cooking oil company, a bunch of other local companies, and Cine Fondation Can. And that's it, basically, in terms of. That's the cinema. It <laughs> could be anything. <laughs> so, at one point, was this I an integral part of your thinking to shoot on a fixed camera as much as you can and then to turn the entire film into a camera gag? Or is it something that came in the process of, of, of shooting? No, it was from the beginning, it was like two parts uh, to have these characters, uh, the daily life, uh, you know, to have it in, in this uh, this day. And after that, the second part, uh, being in a TV, I was inspired by uh, the way that they are filming in a TV, uh, in a local TV, they used two cameras. So there I wanted to have like a first person in a way. So I use in a way the 
in, uh, the way that the camera guy is seeing and he's trying to find characters, the truth, let's say, you know. So uh, mainly, briefly, I, I was thinking to have a first part at the third person and the second part at the first person, you know. So uh, that was from the beginning. I knew that I will split the project in two, like in this way, you know, and I will have a long part in the TV show. And where did that come from in your background? Sort of working with a fixed camera, working with this this kind of filmmaking, because it was not typical of Romanian cinema at the time. It was probably not something that you were encouraged to do in school. Um, where did it come from? Can you remember? It's been a while. No, it's a, it depends on each project, but I think it, 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 it was also something real that it's, it was dealing with a certain type of perception of time, a certain type of uh, dealing with time of the characters, a certain type of uh, long, uh, uh, sort of maybe a, a certain type of emptiness, or, you know, so, um, but I, it's it also, I think it's a matter of taste. Um, I, I can't, I can't say precisely, you know, for, uh, in the school, also, I use long shots sometimes, and those, I because sometimes when we make you rehearsal with the actors, at one point you think that is better, or you think that the scene is better in a long, long shot maybe than to cut it. If you start to cut it, uh, the dialogues have other importance, and I, I was thinking that in this uh, particular project for the beginning is better to stay in. Or long shots like a like tableau, you know, like yeah, like like a like a painting within a frame. Yeah, yes. in a way because they were like um, uh, uh, time uh, having three characters, three stories in parallel, and uh, having like uh, oh, the, the bits of time bits spent of time, with yeah, yeah with these three characters. Yes. Yeah. And from the moment that uh, they join all of them, I will use this type of TV. And how did the actors take to it? Because this is not an easy way to work. Oh, they take the it actors. very good because they are mainly theatrical actors. So they work like in, uh, so they take it good. And they're very good at like speaking from a proscenium to the <laughs> audience in the, in, in the TV show, there is a, there is a relationship to the back, the background and the foreground, the audience that is is very theatrical. It's in a way theatrical, and in the same time, I mean, they have this, uh, uh, yeah, they have this type of thinking in, uh, in uh, the timing. You know, the timing is there for a, for a long shot. So this is the first film that you went to Cannes with. No. No, I, uh, I you went with a short. You with a short, with a short film. But what was the experience with this one? And going to Cannes and getting the award, and it was the, it was at a time when Romanian film was just actually pushing its way, uh, uh, that way. And uh, yours was one of the earliest. Uh, it's, it's a good experience. <laughs> 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 uh, <coughs> no, it's important because I came from a marginal culture, so for me, uh, going in Cannes and have a prize that means. Uh, or being in Cannes, that means that the movie could be, it has a uh, larger distribution. And uh, of course, you have uh, in Cannes, a film could be, uh, could take off, a film could uh, pass uh, uh, like that, or uh, a film could be destroyed. So you have, it's the first time when the audience uh, is watching the film, so you are nervous, quite nervous. Um. I think we can open it up to the audience. Uh, where there's two mics, please wait for the mic to arrive because we need it for recording. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Ah, thank you very much. First of all, um, I wanted to thank you for a brilliant film. And um, this is like, I think the third time I've seen it. And uh, uh, what struck me the most this time was um, how close tears and laughter are um, with 
with the story, with the historical event, with uh, what you're doing. Um, I wonder if you could comment on one thing that um, has interested me for a long time. I think Romania is making uh, basically the best movies in the world in the last 20 years. Uh, and they're not all the same. And there's a number of directors. I mean, I think of you and Christ Christian Munju. Uh, and there's, there's many others. Um, and there's, uh, but it doesn't seem like a, a single school, a single technique, a single anything. It's a very, very varied and very um, rich uh, new uh, direction in filmmaking. And um, from a very poor country, uh, from a very beleaguered country. Uh, and I was wondering if you could comment on how that came to be. How did that happen? Um, thank you very much for... <laughs> uh, um, I don't know, it's like I'm from inside. I think each one of us is making, he's trying, he came to cinema, we are doing that with passion and after that we do our our stories, our, uh, uh, I think we are quite honest in what we are doing and uh, with passion and um, it's very hard to speak from, from inside, you know. So uh, I feel that it's a, it's a good uh, time for Romania cinema. There are young directors that they are coming after. There is a certain type of mood and a certain type of uh, flow, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I think it's something linked to the history with the, uh, it's a generation that it's in between, uh, in between uh, uh, grows up in 90s and after that they, uh, in the, after the revolution, all of us, we had like, I was 14, but other colleagues, they were, they were there like 20 maybe. And uh, uh, I think it's a generation that tries to define in a way the world in which we are living in. So maybe if we look back, I think in, 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 uh, maybe I'm, now I was thinking about other, maybe around this type of e events, I'm speaking now about small, uh, small countries in a way, or uh, cultures, maybe around 68, it was something, it was happening something great in, in France, which is a much bigger culture. Of course, in States you have like, uh, it's a very complex, uh, and uh, I think here constant, uh, there were uh, a movement in cinema and uh, it's, it's the main uh, train or locomotive. Uh, the main engine. The main engine of the cinema, but it's, uh, we are speaking now uh, about a huge culture. Uh, but maybe it's something linked with, yeah, with in this type of periods when change, they are, uh, the things they are changing very fast, no? They are, people they try to define and to, maybe it's coming from here. I don't know a certain type of creativity in the Romanian cinema. Uh, we, and maybe this context, you know, if historical context influence in a way the, the work of me and my colleagues, uh, I don't know. There's also a material context that's sort of like turned into a, an aesthetic. So the, the, the lack of means uh, for making, the lack of funding for making uh, uh, cinema in Romania actually turned into this like kind of minimalist aesthetic that is ends up being very honest and very sort of on a you know of of the moment yeah I, that, again it's very hard for me to because I'm from inside and uh, uh, I'm not a critic and so it's very hard to to see from outside you know to to look at uh, to, to see all the picture you know uh, there's a question over there. Is this on? This on? Oh, uh, thank you so much uh, for the amazing film. I just wanted to pick up on something that the first uh, comment brought up was, which was about uh, laughter and tears together. And because I think you heard everybody laughing so much uh, throughout the film, and I just was wondering how you think about comedy and what comedy, the relationship of comedy and tragedy or something like that, because it was such a such a comedic film, but 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 so much else as well. So I'm just sort of wondering 
we have what comedy is for you, what, where you kind of think of how you think about comedy in some way. Uh, and yeah, some, something about comedy and film. I'm not sure. Thank you. For me, I think the comedy is coming from the moment that you are trying to be very, very serious with something, you know. So serious till the end, you know. So there, till the moment that the world is falling apart. It's no way of Buster Keaton, if you want. You know, so that's... And I think I have... Uh, I have this... I am in a way like that, you know. So it's for me, it's a certain type of uh, therapy. Uh, sometimes I'm very serious, you know. I was thinking, I wanted to ask you, uh, I thought the film was great, it was very funny. Uh, was interested also in how that humor resonated outside of, I suppose it's a very Romanian kind of humor, but it resonates outside. In any case, I wanted to ask how, how was the film received in Romania? Um, did people, I thought it was a critical film too also, did people embrace it or, did people or people more interested in kind of more Hollywood kind of now turn outside and kind of eh, they not uh, we're not too interested in your film. The, how, do, how how was the reception in Romania at different levels politically, kind of aesthetically, uh, and all these kinds of things? Uh, in the beginning, it was like uh, it has like ten thousand entries in cinema which it was not so much, but in the same time we didn't have so many. Because uh, right after the revolution, the cinemas, they were closed, they start to close because we have cinemas, the downtown cities. So we don't have, for 20 years now, they start to build again cinemas, but in malls. So we lose two generations of, uh, of people that they are going to the cinemas, to theaters. So in the first point, it was, yeah, 10,000 at that time. It was a small release in a way. But what it was happening with this film, I think it was growing in time because a lot of people, they told me that they watch it. And uh, uh, of course, they I think they downloaded it because even I think I made like maybe 5,000 DVDs, you know. But uh, but the, the I think the movie uh, creates his own life, you know. So um, I think now it's quite known, I think, uh, this film. But uh, at that point when I, uh, when I was uh, released, it, you know, it was released in the theaters, it was, it was a small, uh, small, a very small release. And in terms of uh, debates and all, uh, the, uh, there were not any, there were not uh, debates. Um, in a way, cinema, uh, at that time, even now, not, I think it's uh, for the Romanian intelligence. It's not, it's not uh, an art in a way. So uh, yeah. I think I'm right. <laughs> I think so it's, anyway, it's changed a uh, lot. They figured out that there's something going on. So even, the, uh, even the intellectuals figured out that there's something going on there. So uh, yeah, it was like uh, in terms of debates and all. It was uh, there were not many. I think it, it had, I mean, my memory of it is that it, it was tremendous, there was tremendous impact when it came out because it was the film that even those who hadn't seen the entire film had seen bits of it. It ended up sh being shown on TV fairly But I, I quickly. don't like people that they saw just bits of <laughs> Oh, no, nobody <laughs> I does. I started to do video clips. <laughs> yes, but everybody, w you know, my experience of, of, of others seeing the film and talking about the film, it was that that was the film that they had expected about the revolution, yeah, actually, nice. because that was the experience that we all, had in some way uh, this this mixture of comedy and tragedy uh, was the one that everybody expected and it spoke to that experience that nobody dared to actually speak to because it was mostly treated as a tragedy, as a major political event and we all had an experience that included comedy in it, absolutely everybody at the, at, at the time. Um, and it was, I think it was a very, it was very welcome and it grew in time tremendously. Uh, yeah, that, that's yeah. true because uh, I, um, yeah. once I'm uh, three times <laughs> lady, it's, it's great.
<laughs> I have I haven't seen it three, ti three times <laughs> from the moment that I finish. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I think there's a question over here. Oh, sorry, first here and then. Oh, yes. Uh, the movie put me in mind of 1989 here in the Bay Area uh, and the reception of people who followed uh, the Romanian situation in 1989 here. I was indirectly associated with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, the, the judge, one judge in that court is uh, Romanian, Alex Kozinski. And Alex Kozinski, uh, who is now the chief judge of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, a huge legal body from Montana to um, Micronesia to <laughs> Alaska to Arizona, one of the federal district court uh, of appeal judge. He really made a splash because he uh, wrote a article, first of all, in a law review, but secondly, highly publicized uh, that uh, uh, the execution of Ceausescu and his wife was a major violation of due process of law, and the, quote, revolution was an in-house, top-down uh, cabal, <coughs> and uh, that definition did influence a lot of people, I think, in the Bay Area. Uh, and there was nothing, nothing, <laughs> no hint of humor in uh, Judge Kaczynski's uh, uh, analysis. And I'm wondering how many Romanians have that feeling and uh, are inclined to laugh perhaps very bitterly about the, the faux revolutionary aspect of the revolution, if I could put it that way. Um. At that time, the execution of Ceausescu, which, which it was, like you said, uh, uh, it was I f it was uh, received like a relief, you know. So uh, for the people, uh, I think al almost all the people, including me, it was like something that it's supposed to be done. Otherwise, if you think in history, it was not a fair trial and. The other problem of the revolution that ne never was uh, because there there were a lot of people that they were died, they they, they were dead, and they were shot, and even now we don't know exactly who did that. So it's a problem of um, because uh, even now I think the trial it's in co in curse. Uh, so that's a problem of uh, in a way of looking back and to really to. Uh, to, to see and to search what it was really happened, you know. So, uh, of course, when you are making a, a revolution in a way, it's supposed to, uh, it was supposed to change all from the next day. But I, and I think a lot of people, they were waiting for that, for a change, for a radical change. And uh, there is this concept of revolution, which is a roman romantic one, no? that all it will be the next day, all it will change at 180 degrees. You know, so I think a lot of people in Romania they were they had these expectations, this point of view. And after that, of course, it was a period. If we look back in time, there were some movements of the miners, a certain type of restoration. So I think in all the, even in the French, it is, it's also the same type in a way of, uh, but when I was doing this film, I was thinking at that because to, to work and to, to uh, in, a, in a way against a little bit of this romantic concept of the revolution. Thank you. What's very uh, after that the characters, of course, the characters, my characters. When I was uh, sh uh, seeing that uh, that uh, TV show, the characters they stay into my mind, and I, uh, in a way, uh, uh, when I start to write the script, I think uh, six, seven years after I I I, I have seen the the real TV show, uh, for me it was important. I think when I when I did this film to have because. Uh, I was interesting in a way, interested in a way about people that they they live through a transition. You know, so uh, all, all the time I had in my mind that 
my three characters, including me, we are like in a in a railway station and wait for a train, you know. So uh, I was more interested in that part and in, uh, and to have uh, and in a way, in a in a human way, uh, each character wants to be a hero. So I was and he takes a part and he's a part of a big history. So uh, this aspect, they really interested me, you know. So uh, uh, let's say making this movie, I was more uh, interested in characters, you know, and how they, they deal with this, you know, with the big history. And uh, this, at one point, this, um, uh, this need, in a way, to be in the history, to be heroes, you know. Thank you. Sir. Great, thanks. Uh, wonderful film um, and great sense of time and place. Very evocative, really steeped in it. Um, the question I had, I mean, it, it, so the interviewer has his ide feats. You know, he has to decide whether people were cowards or courageous, right? You know, and, and so even though he's at this dead end at the commercial break and he can't go anywhere with it, he keeps on going back to it. Um, I was wondering, you know, because the, the thought I kept on having is, well, what about asking, has the revolution had any impact since that time in our town? Instead of just trying to say, was it before, was it at 1205 or was it at 1210? You know, we, we know we're not going to get anywhere with that. So I guess my question is, um, what's your own take on how that evolved in small town Romania in the years after the revolution, the, 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 the quote, quote unquote, 1208 revolution, in terms of that culture of, uh, of you know, small town culture of fear or how it gradually unfolded, how the lights gradually came on. Did they come on? Did some go on? Did some go off? What's your own take on how things evolved after the revolution in towns like that? Of course, it's a, it's a certain type of uh, uh, it's, yeah. it's a certain type of rapportation to the center, you know. So uh, also, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of each person at the end, you know, or each uh, each in, in individual. But but for the for the what I was striking away when I saw the real TV show. What I was, it's like, uh, and also we came back with the process of the Ceausescu, uh, because I think all the formats of the, of a TV show, even now in Romania, is I, the talk show, uh, in a way, they are a sort of trial, you know. So uh, for me, it was interesting to 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 see that, and the 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 owner and the guy from the TV. He has this. He has a certain type of power, and he's dealing with history. So he, he, he because it was a revolution, which for a lot of the people, a lot of people that they have access through the TV, through the television, uh, he's uh, he's there in power, and he wants to clarify history. So uh, in a way, this is also. Um, Funny is becoming fun, funny, but at the same time, I think it's resembling in a way of this because Romanian Revolution it was the first event broadcast worldwide. Uh, it was the first historical event that uh, has access through the TV. So to be ma mediated like that, uh, I think for the main character, it ha uh, for the TV owner has a certain type of uh, horror. Yeah, so the, an, an ego invested. An ego, yes. an ego. So he's, uh, and after that, of course, uh, for me, a character like the teacher, I think he was all the time freeing to his mind. And he was all the time, because of he, he ways of being free, he was alone. And maybe that, so uh, that go, he starts, uh, yeah, maybe he was, a, he was a little bit too drunk, but uh, <laughs> it was a character that maybe in, when he was young, he was free, you know, so more free than, than the others. So they are different, uh, uh, but the, the way we need the discussion, is, it's imposed by the, by the owner.
was looking for the mytholo uh, the mythological dictionary. It's another dictionary moment that you he wants. He wants to he wants to clarify history. He has this type of orgolium, you know. I think we yeah. only have time for one more question. It's up there. Thank you. I have a two-part question. The first question is somewhat naive. Do you believe Mr. Monescu was there before 1208? And then secondly, did you give the actor who played him any direction as to whether he should believe he were there or not? Yes, I, I, I told him that he was there. And, to, and of course, we, we build uh, around this, yeah. <laughs> Because at one point it's a matter of seeing things, you know, it's about perception and each one of the, because in that small town it was impossible for the others that one, you know, because sometimes when you have a rapportation to this type of, uh, it was someone next to one and he was judged by, by the way he's in daily life now, the people, it, for them it was very hard to put him, you know, it was not that type of hero, you know. So uh, we, we talk about that, you know. Thanks very much for everyone for coming. I hope you come tomorrow to Infinite Thank you. Ball. Thank you to Mona and Cornelio Porumboyu. And we do have a film following this one, so we need to exit the theater. Thank you. It starts at 8. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that was beautiful. Yeah. Oh.